Did you know that your gut is host to tens of trillions of microorganisms which can have a profound effect on your overall health and even your emotions? In this episode, we'll visit with Dr. Todd Lapine to discuss your gut microbiome and what you should and should not do for overall gut health. It's an area of medical science that we are just now beginning to understand, and we'll be covering it here today on Immortality Now. Funding for Immortality Now is made possible in part by OnDemed. This therapeutic approach uses biofeedback and pulsed electromagnetic stimulation to help patients improve their stress tolerance. To learn more or to find a practitioner near you, go to OnDemed.net. Hello, this is Dr. Ron Klotz, and uh, we're here with Immortality Now, another episode, and we're in Las Vegas at the... Uh, World's Congress of Anti-Aging Medicine with Dr. Todd Lapine. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for attending and thank you very much for presenting. Dr. Lapine's uh, uh, area of expertise is uh, the human biome. Mm -hmm. The gut microbiome. The gut microbiome. There's a lot of research being done worldwide about the human microbiome. And <clears throat> what you have to realize is that there are so many things that we have exposure to that affect the human microbiome. When people take diet soda, that can actually act act as an antibiotic and kill off your microbiome. And your microbiome is like a rainforest, and the more diverse it is, the healthier you are. Now, when you say the biome, what you're really talking about is you're not you're talking about. Are you talking about the the the, the gut itself, or are you talking about the microflora within the, the gut? The microflora, the microbiota. They call it the microbiome. It's it's the sum totality of all the different hundreds of organisms that are in there, which are a very complex, biodiverse ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And there are, in fact, hundreds of different organisms. Oh not yes, just one. Absolutely, yeah. And they, I mean, they're they're, they're they're learning more about them all the time. The, the human microbiome, you, you can actually categorize into three groups, sort of three major groups. Uh, but there is very much unique. So you can even take individuals who are identical twins, and they'll have similar ones, but it'll be just slightly different. And it's also dependent upon different foods that you eat. So people in Japan actually have a specific organism that helps them to digest seaweed because that's part of their diet. And the other thing that's important is to realize is the gut microbiome actually stands outside the body. Uh, so it's, it's not part, it's really part of the planet Earth, if you will. Mm -hmm. We're this big hollow tube that sort of carries them around. Uh, and also some of the really interesting uh, l literature is that they actually can manipulate us in terms of our, uh, our cr food cravings. And our behaviors. Absolutely, yes. And the other thing that's really important um, that we are seeing in America is we're seeing an abundance of being people being overweight, obesity, diabetes. There are actually studies showing that when you have imbalances of the gut microbiome, that actually can tip you in the direction of, of having uh, insulin resistance, uh, diabetes, obesity. And yeah, thank you. I was just about to say, what is the, what does all this have to do with life expectancy, life extension, and, uh, uh, you know, we certainly quality of life issues are clear. You know, if you, uh, if you don't assimilate your foods properly, you're going to be setting yourself up for disease. You end up with disease. You're going to uh, cut your lifespan short. Absolutely. And, and one of the, I mean, the key thing that causes aging or excess aging is excess inflammation. We call it inflammaging. And what can happen with the human microbiome as time goes on, depending on what you're eating and other factors, you can get imbalances of the gut microbiome, which you call dysbiosis, and then that in turn can lead uh, further down the road towards leaky gut, low-grade endotoxemia, which is basically that you're always constantly having lipopolysaccharides in your blood. It's like being septic <laughs> at some level. And uh, it's been tied with multiple, uh, you know, diseases, cardiovascular disease, um, autoimmune diseases, Alzheimer's. I mean, it, mm -hmm. the list goes on and on. Yeah, brain fog, Al skin rashes. Absolute eczema, psoriasis, you name it. So, you know, I, I, one of my sayings is, you know, uh, uh, health is paid with good intestines. <laughs> <laughs> So what's the take-home message? How do we keep our gut healthy, happy, and not doing bad things for us, and actually doing good things for us? Well, I think the, the, the key thing is uh, really avoiding antibiotics unnecessarily, avoiding artificial sweeteners, um, expanding your roughage in your diet, the, uh, pre, the prebiotics, which are the fibers, um, eating fermented foods, um, uh, cabbage, kimchi, uh, kefir, uh, those kinds of things, and those are really very, very powerful things to uh, help with the gut microbiome. Sauerkraut, sauerkraut, oh, absolutely, sauerkraut, fantastic, absolutely. Pickles, 
Pickles. Well, it's not, yeah, pickles. Pickles, probably sauerkraut, raw, raw sauerkraut is probably better than pickles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the microbiology of uh, the environment is very poorly understood in medicine. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, I can't think of, uh, of, of one doctor in a hundred who even has a clue exactly. as to what's going on. So it's new information. That's totally and, new. It's, uh, and it's powerful information. This is, this is powerful medicine. Absolutely powerful. It's, it is. And there's, it's, we're, you know, we're basically uh, just starting to explore this, this hidden world. It's like a Jacques Cousteau. You know, under, <laughs> it's like going into this hidden world, and it's a hidden world. Uh, indeed. Uh, Dr. Lapine, uh, with regard to the issue of GI health, uh, there is a ubiquitous use, I mean widespread use uh, uh, of uh, proton pump inhibitor drugs, mm-hmm. commonly referred to as the purple pill. Mm-hmm. Again, there's several of them out there. And, yeah. uh, and with proton pump inhibitors, what, what is the use of this inhibitor? Uh, what's the valid use of this, of this medication? You really, I mean, proton pump inhibitors, the studies are really short-term use for an acute situation like gastritis, bleeding ulcer, or something like that. But the, the, the problem with the, the purple pills, if you will, is the long-term use. And what happens is lack of stomach acid causes bacteria to overgrow in the small intestine. So people can develop uh, bacterial overgrowth. Um, you can develop food allergies. Uh, you can develop leaky gut. Uh, long-term, it's also associated with osteoporosis. Uh, vitamin B12 deficiency. So there's a whole host of, of downstream effects or side effects with prolonged use of these. And heartburn is not caused by acid. So <laughs> you want to have acid in your stomach. It is completely normal to have acid in your stomach. In fact, some people with heartburn don't have enough acid. So you actually have to, have to support their acid in the stomach to actually get heartburn relief. Mm. Um, so, so you really, I mean, very rarely do you want to use uh, those uh, medications, and if, if so, for short periods of time and try to get people off of them. And lifestyle changes make a big difference. I mean, there's certain, I've actually seen uh, patients come to my office and they're actually taking a medication that's actually causing their heartburn. And rather than switching the medication or stopping it, the doctor just gives them the heartburn medication. So it's like iatrogenic imperfect, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, Dr. Lapine, thank you so much for being part of Immortality Now. All right, thank you for having me. And the information is uh, of great interest to everyone. And you can uh, learn more about this topic and others at www.worldhealth.net.